Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we are getting to know uh, local indie wrestler Jock Samson, uh, sequin jackets, workplace violence, Mexicans, Mexicans, and more Mexicans, how to be a star, and surprise, butt sex. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 336. Sorgatron here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, coming at you once again. Let's get on with this right away with us uh, uh, on the couch, as typical, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Yes, that InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, yes, I am the genius behind InsertCoinToBegin.com. That is... Insert coin to begin. And com. also from San Antonio, Texas, that San Antonio, Texas, that is one. the Wrestle Fan. That San Antonio, Texas, the one with the heat and the Latinos and stuff. <laughs> and the bur- <laughs> and the burritos. The heat and the Latinos. <laughs> AJ, AJ in the chat room said frog, frog splashing my hotel bed BRB. <laughs> BRB. He needs to make videos of this and send them in. We got we have it on on like l- last week on the gold, but yeah. <laughs> um, also with us from where are you from there, DJ LB? I'm from uh, the greatest and best city in the world, Pittsburgh, fucking Pennsylvania. What's up? That's right, it's uh, <laughs> DJ Lunchbox. In right. the shadow of Heinz Field. In the shadow of Heinz Field. <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing at something. Audio listeners, fuck you guys. <laughs> 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 Excellent. And also with us, join us once again with this brand new HD cam is Hot Wheels leading the way. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm looking dashing today. There he oh, is. Sorry. No, no. Mad Mike, don't kill me. I just had to do it. But I am more dashing than you. Oh, there you go. Uh, of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show where we talk about wrestling and get a little mayhem up in here. We're just fans talking about the fake sport that we love pro wrestling and have since uh, most of us childhood and most right. of us before WrestleFan was even born. Uh, you can find more out about us including <laughs> articles about said fetus at WrestlingMayhemShow.com <laughs> You can also check fetus. us out at Mayhem Show on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. we got a great open group going on there. We're on Google+. Plus. You can also follow the show and get every episode on iTunes, Blip TV, on your Roku box on the Blip TV app, on Stitcher go download it. Uh, it's a real easy way to follow it. Uh, you can also uh, uh, drop us a line at Good Times Get at down. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can also drop us a line to 412-206-WMS0. If you want to drop in a hotline, we got one for later tonight from Bo Diggity. Uh, and also you can buy the app. Buy the app. app buy it. App, app. App, this wrestling the, mayhem app. shown gold. If you look that up, it's on your iOS app store for your iPad and iPhones and iPod touches. It's on the Amazon app store for your Android devices. It's the way to get every episode straight to your device. And also you get some exclusive <laughs> video uh, for, for uh, just for our gold people, $1.99 in the app store. If you dig this stuff, you want to support us, that's the way to do it, $1.99 at a time. And um, as a reminder, it's 63 rubles and 73 thank copecks. Thank you, thank you. Somebody let us know what it is in Canada now that we have somebody on Insert Coin to begin. That's, uh, I think it's a loon. I, it's, it's a what? It's a loon? It's a loony. It's a loony, something. a loony and a half maybe? So I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the 5, conversion rate. It's been a while since it's wow. 5,000 euros. <laughs> 5,000 euros. <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, and of course, hey, you can join us here live every uh, every Tuesday at around about 8.30 p.m. or so Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Everybody's jumping in the chat room. BM Mayhem. AM in the chat room. We got Riz out there. We got Bobby F. J. Town. We got Bo Diggity at M- WMS. WMS. Zero two K. I know I saw there earlier tonight uh, during the other shows and a bunch of other people. Please join up and uh, and have some fun with us uh, and be part of the show because we really do uh, uh, watch, li- listen, and react to what's going on. <laughs> what's They're going yelling. On? They're yelling. Ah! Oh, it's, uh, one one point five nine euros. Thank you. Like, thank, that. thank you, Bo Diggy. Right. <laughs> that was way off. <laughs> That's a pound and a half. That's a pound and a pound and a half, exactly. Um, mayhem. 
Uh, oh, joining us later, uh, uh, scheduled to join us later in the show is Jock Sampson, of course, of RWA. That and I know. <laughs> I'm glad you hey, said it, Chachi. Hey, you know, Here we go. A couple of weeks ago, time. now wheels. A couple weeks ago, you had some issues with one Jock Sampson at a wrestling show down in West Newton. So now we're getting him on the show. He's been kind of picking a fight with Chachi a little bit on Twitter. Good. I'm glad he's picking on Chachi. Maybe he'll lay <laughs> off on me. <laughs> exactly. So we'll see where Don't that goes. Be afraid there. of the giant redneck. There you go. I'm um, afraid of giant rednecks. Do you see the skin tone? They are the common inhabitants in the San Antonio. <laughs> In the San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, okay, sure. Uh, let's get right into it the only way we know how, by getting into the fan interactions. We got, first of all, let's go to the fan mails. Uh, who's got the first fan one, guys? Fan mail. The Russian uh, one? You want to do the Russian one first off? Okay. Start up big. <laughs> DJ Lunchbox, I'll cue up your music. You go ahead and get started. Da, yes. Oh, good. Oh, Hello. Mm, okay, <laughs> testing out the uh, accent. Good to go. Hey, Mayhem <laughs> Crew. It's me. It's me. It's Big PPC Phil. Sora was good. Impact was good. ROH was good. SmackDown was alright. <laughs> this is what a genetic rundown would sound like. Raw. <laughs> Tensai and Cody Rhodes seem like the racist team versus masked Mexicans. This is cool with me. <laughs> <laughs> Mexicans can't always win, though. <laughs> Kane and Brian deal is funny, but worst hug ever. Kane versus Brian don't, ne- don't need to feud, though. Sandow is amazing. What a thought you run away if you are a heel and you feel like you are going to lose. Smart! This is what I do on WWE 12. Create space between opponent or knockdown ref and hit with chair. <laughs> CM Punk is a heel everywhere but Chicago, just like Brett was face in Canada and outside the US, but was heel in the States. This is how I feel about the punkies and I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm from Illinois, it's not far from Chicago. I mean Russia. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Kane is in Josh Ma- Kane is in Josh Matthews' nightmares by now. Good luck with that, Josh. Cameron <laughs> He's just is doing the- his job. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, there's uh, so many pauses. <laughs> The Drunkodactyl! Somebody call a taxi! Somebody call a taxi! (laughs) (laughs) I'm dying. Ziggler versus Orton. Orton, um, Ziggler is amazing. Orton is boring. That is all. Cena vs. Del Rio was a good match. You got to love it. Miz did great job on commentary. I wish that punk or someone would beat up Jaller would beat up Lawler every week. Miz <laughs> is better overall. Antonio Cesaro is dominant. Dominate. He destroyed Santino. You would think that Antonio would put Santino out of his misery. Santino equals waste of time, lawn, lame, non strudel having, fruity maluti in the booty puppeteer that should be on some kid show on daytime TV. Oh, yeah, fruity just keep him on Saturday morning slam. <laughs> fruity maluti in the booty. Fruity maluti in the booty. <laughs> show title. Yep. <laughs> yep. Also, what Riz got there? Somebody call a taxi. Wayne Show 336. <laughs> Luke Gallows is speaker for Aces and Aids. Let's hope TNA doesn't blow it. Which upcoming pay per view will you think will be better? WWE or TNA? What is your favorite match on both of the upcoming pay per view? Till next week. It's me. It's me. It's Big PPC Phil. P.S. I may try to get in chat room again or do voicemail. There you go. There and you then go. He has, I, he has a little add on here. Yeah. Continue. Heyman and Punk, best tag team ever. We will see how this goes. Fucking awesome. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 
All right. Um, well, this questions. Uh, what was the first question there? I'm going to close the email. Hold on. Um, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, which pay-per-view do you think will be better? WWE, WWE or TNA? TNA? I, I think with this, I think it's... I think Night of Champions will, will turn out pretty good, especially with what's going on with uh, uh, the Punk Cena thing. I think that's going to win out. That's going to be that's, your... It's got a lot of buzz behind yeah, it. Yeah, it does know? have a lot of buzz, especially with this Heyman thing that popped up on Monday night. Um, yeah, so. I totally agree with that. I mean, I wasn't going to give it any chance, but when Heyman popped up, I was like, well, you just caught my attention. And I'm in. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, and honestly, I watched Impact today, mostly in the background while I was working. And and, and uh, I, I didn't even know what the matches were. Like, I guess there's the five-way for the Bound for Glory thing. But well, I, I think it's supposed to be a four-way. Now they're trying to yeah, figure out how to make it a four-way. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I, I really honestly don't know enough about the pay-per-view to make a decision. I like so. a good four-way. I'm sure you yeah. do. I'm sure you do. Oh. Mm-hmm. In the pooper. Just like Let's Play 14 tonight. With yes. Bobby was part of that format. Okay, um, now, uh, <laughs> and, and what is your favorite match of both of the upcoming pay-per-views? Again, I don't know what TNA's is. TNA really doesn't have one. No, no, I didn't think they do. So, I mean, it, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in the coming weeks, I'm sure. Or yeah. we'll just forget about like we uh, sometimes do. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I would say WWE... Um, TNA just isn't doing it for me right no, now. No, no, it isn't for a lot of people. Uh, so it, it's that wall. We'll see. I, I really, I don't expect to pay a lot of attention to it until we get to uh, uh, Bound for Glory. And so. I think uh, the best, the, the best match is going to be a toss up between uh, the title matches. Um, really, you you, you think Sheamus Del Rio is still going to be? Yeah. I feel like there needs I, to be a even though, we, even though we've seen it for like the fourth time at a pay per view, yeah, I yeah. think it's a, it's a great feud. They keep it going well, mm-hmm. and uh, both guys are pulling out stuff that they normally don't do. Um, Sheamus with the Texas Clover Leaf on mm-hmm. Monday. That Which made me wonder: awesome. Are they going to make it? Maybe I, I think I really think that match needs to have a stipulation, yeah. and I hope they make it like a submission match or something, something a little different. You know? Yeah, just, just, just more, I mean, just from the fact that you know we've had we've had that match four matches straight. I want to see them like maybe inject something different. Mm-hmm. You know, but, like yeah, steroids. Honestly, I kind of agree. With <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Wheels? Something different with that is okay. Like you said, sword with the submission match. Okay, say Del Rio goes over. Ziggler flies out and takes the belt off of Del Rio. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can see a Ziggler thing going on. So I, I, I'm kind of hoping for a uh, a best two out of three falls. Yeah, like a three stages of hell type match. Mm-hmm. I, I think these I guys would be awesome. <laughs> Mm-hmm. In that type of match, Samus and Daniel Bryan had a great two out of three falls match. What like April? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it was it was the rematch from WrestleMania. So yeah. mm-hmm. I, I I think that's the general direction they need to go. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, with Punk and Cena, uh, it, it's Punk and Cena, mm-hmm. so we know they're going to pull off a great match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they just have, and that. they're in Cena's hometown, so yeah. there's there's like more to it. Like, it, it you know, not the same, of course, with, with what we get in Chicago when we had those two there. Right. Uh, but I think they got a lot of really interesting stuff building up to it. And I think it'll be a bit of a story, too, because of the stuff with Heyman and, and, and the way they're going with it. Yeah, I feel it's so. going to be much more, like, story-based. Yeah. As opposed to Seamus than Del Rio, you right. know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it'll be good. Nice. Um, okay, uh, with that, we got another straight-up voicemail, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, not voicemail, uh, email, right? Yeah. Like, that just came in. Now, Chachi, you said you had one? Yeah. Um, All right, go ahead. Bobbitt wanted us to know that uh, after he tweeted about Sin Cara backflipping in a sequin trench coat, that he was followed by the sequin jacket's Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Twitter account, does it say? Like, no. is it probably at sequin jacket or probably. something? Probably. Okay. So. <laughs> that's That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, uh, I think, uh, Russell fan, you had the other one. Wait a minute, I'm... wait a minute. We can't just leave it at that. <laughs> you, know what, you, know what, you know what that means? That means there's somebody, a person, an actual person somewhere who's sitting, um, and they have a, a search ready, ready <laughs> to go at all times. That anytime anybody mentions sequins and any sort of jacket, it pops up on their radar and then I'm like, follow them. <laughs> That's a thing that happens. 
So I'm that look, means I'm looking you for need it. to say something sequent you? on Twitter. LB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, sequence. somebody, give us the Twitter name or something. Just say sequence Jack and see if he friends you on or follows you on Twitter. Well, you probably have to say Sincara as well. Jacket. I found, I, I found Sincara, but is I, it the Sincara sequence jacket or is the Twitter account just about sequence jackets? I don't know. Because mm. he said sequin trench coat, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right do some research it. on that. We'll come back to that uh, throughout. Do the night sequence year. coverall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cumberbund. Uh, Re- Wrestle fan, you had another one. I do have one. We just got it sent in, and I am reading this one because it is in Spanish. <laughs> so, and I'm the closest one to the area. So, no matter how much how I pronounce it, it's, it's going to sound right to everyone else on the show. Okay. <laughs> Hola, amigos, and wrestling mayhem show. Mi llaman el Gran Azul y yo soy un superestrella de lucha libre internacional. Tengo muchos campeonatos mundiales a mi nombre y ahora lucho la aseña independiente americana. What the shit? Your accent What the sucks. fuck is my SAP button? Oh, God. Wrestling man, I'm sure. SAP, come on. The Spanish announce team working here. También me puedo encontrar en la fiesta de cumpleaños de vez en cuando. Dile a tus amigos sobre to- todo si viven en el sur de California. Muchas gracias, amigos. I think WrestleFan and that email went heel on us. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Because heel finishes with muchas gracias, amigos. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 do we know what that said? It, yes, because thanks to our good friends at Google, <laughs> they provided an English translation. Hello, friends in Wrestling Mayhem Show. I am El Gran Azul, and I am an international wrestling superstar. Hmm. I have many world championships to my name, and now I wrestle the American independent scene. You can also find me at the occasional birthday party. Tell your friends, especially if they live in... <laughs> Tell your friends, especially if they live in Southern California. Thank you very much, friends. Hey, uh, the friends in so- Southern Car- California. There you go. Does he have a website or anything? You just, nope. just uh, look up, look up, Grand. Look up El Gran Azul. There you go with the Z. I imagine. At, so welcome for your kids' birthday party. Uh, so we the learned great a- blue. The yep. great blue. <laughs> yeah, it was big blue. Oh yeah, the great the big- blue. What? The big blue. <laughs> the the blue rest dog. is up to your imagination, I'm sure. All right, and we had another one. I believe Sonic uh, sent this one in. Uh, something about uh, CM CM Punk beds best in the world. It was a little video. It looks like it's from Mad TV. Yeah, I saw that. Can you give us our own rooms? Better get ready for CM Punk beds. Wait, I love how this story. CM Punk, Punk beds. <laughs> it's, it's completely a camera pointed at a TV too. Tired of looking at your brother's dopey face? It's not so dopey. Then you could sleep in the top bunk. <laughs> this mattress is hard. <laughs> so you can go check that out. Just look up CM Punk beds, the best in the world, and uh, I love, to see what I that's love about. No matter what, even though it's CM Punk, he talks like every generic wrestler. Yeah, is this really of. CM Punk doing this? Because I, I really don't see him trying to do that voice. But no, no, I don't think it's I don't think it's actually CM Punk, but. <laughs> but, but 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 props up Mad TV for uh, throwing some wrestling flavor in there. All right, now we got a voicemail from Bo Diggity, who's joining us in the chat room as well. Woo! <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Bo Diggity, I'm here to hypnotize you. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> Very sleepy. Now, Jizz! Jizz? Ta da! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Fuck, I gotta change my all shorts. Right. Yep. <laughs> now that Wait, was, that it? All, was that all there was? That's the all there was. That's all there was. <laughs> best best voicemail ever. Best voicemail segment ever. And we had, ever. let's see, I had another one here from uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Michael B. over on Google Plus. says, Saturday Morning Slam is so dumb and stupid. Now they are working with Scooby-Doo. Seriously, WWE has lost their wrestlehood and manhood. Wrestlehood. <laughs> Well, there you go. Being uh, the Russell Hood. Okay. Boop. And we had a talent during the show last week. I don't think we actually played this one uh, from One Riz. Hey, everybody. It's Hot Wheels. No, it's Hot Wheels. And it's Hot Wheels. No, 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 no it's Hot Wheels. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's the wrong one. He's here, so... Uh, so we, we'll, we'll skip that. Hey, hashtag it WMS or WMS uh, 336 yeah, for this episode. You did a new one, too. Side note. You had um, hair in that one that you don't have now. Uh huh. Huh. It's time for your haircut too, there, sword. No, it's going, like man. Brothers. It's going, man. It's like it's. I'm not going to do that. 
See you next spring. <laughs> Wait, do you mean brothers, or do you mean, like, brothers? Do you mean, like, brothers, <laughs> or, like, brothers? <laughs> like, hug brothers. WrestleFan <laughs> wants to know if you're being racist. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always yes. <laughs> There. Yes to all of the above. All right, with that, let's go to our favorite, the uh, Amateur Falling Down segment, the Indie Minutes uh, with the Wrestle favorite. Fan. Be a uh, star, Wrestle Fan. Be a star. I'll try to be. Um, so, yeah, the first thing I want to talk about for this week in Indie Wrestling was a news story that was actually passed on to me that I'm very excited to report. Um, female uh, wrestling independent superstar Mia Yim. Uh, announced that she uh, has signed a full-time contract to work for the Reina company uh, in Japan. Um, Asians. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She is. She, no, she is. I mean, that's um, all right. But in all honesty, uh, she uh, has been. Uh, wor- she's done a couple different shows in Reina, some tours of Japan, and she's finally getting to make you know a full-time living there. She, uh, she falls in the uh, line of a couple of her in- big independent talents, like Haley Hatred, who used to work for AIW, uh, started going full-time in Japan. Um, but it's great for her, and it's great uh, to get a, a, you know someone from the U.S. out there, you know to that platform and I've, I've actually gotten to see her wrestle life before and she definitely deserves it mm-hmm. she's got a lot of talent um and i definitely think she fits the style uh that they provide up there for the joshis uh so they definitely asians. are gonna i'm sorry asians asian I... so i'm the... sorry wrestle for you. <laughs> the <laughs> answer is yes it is racist. i didn't mean to derail you <laughs> Just okay, um, but yeah, congr- uh, big congratulations to her. Hopefully, she does well there, and um, it, I hope she definitely uh, represents America well uh, in that company. Um, and the next thing that I want to talk, <laughs> there's like giggling over me. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is the um, uh, something I mentioned last week that uh, the uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling, the group down here in Texas, their Prom DVD uh, is now officially available on Smartmark Video. Uh, and Smart Mark Video on Demand, you can get it uh, at the on the DVD version. You can get the MP4 version that you can play on your mobile phone or on your mobile phones and all other uh, MP4 devices, and also on uh, their Video on Demand service. So go check them out. Uh, it's fifteen dollars for the DVD. It's like twelve for the MP4, and then nine ninety nine if you want the uh, on demand. Uh, so there's a lot of different options, and you can definitely uh, go check out a really awesome company with a really innovative show. Uh, so that's smartmarkvideo.com and smbod.com for the on-demand version. Um, and then the final thing I want to talk about on this week's Indie Minute that we will be talking about later uh, in our interview is uh, our friends at Renegade Wrestling Alliance have an event coming up in the uh, coming month uh, for Fall Free For All 4. Because that's a mouthful. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, main event of Jimmy Nuts versus Kato. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, local Say that uh, with uh, respect. It's Kato! Kato! Capitals! Um, but a lot of... Uh, <laughs> uh, what? Um, oh, no, that was of, awesome. Go ahead. A lot of uh, local area stars uh, getting to showcase themselves. Sorgatron Media will be there. Uh, and if you... I would definitely encourage you to go uh, to that event. Um, come say hi and to you can me. All, oh, go ahead, Wills. I said, come say hi to me. <laughs> this yep, guy. Yep. Um, and definitely, uh, if you want more of RWA, you can order uh, all the DVD uh, from RWA at uh, SorgatronMedia.com at the uh, at, uh, under the store uh, option on SorgatronMedia.com. So yeah, go check them out and uh, go support some local talent. And that, my friends, is the ending minute for this week. Well, that was a lot of information there, Russell Fan, and I thank you very much. Uh, right now, we have a guest on a show that, well, I guess I should say is an alright guy, but I don't like him after what he's put me through. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the Appalachian... What would you call yourself, Jock? Appalachian I am what? The- Listen here, you dumb shit. If you're going to introduce me, you're going to introduce it right. I am the Appalachian Outlaw. You understand me? Ain't yes, be sir. Stutter and all me and shit. Hey, yeah, uh, Appalachian outlaw, and you're also known as the genuine Jock Sampson. What's so genuine about you? I'd like to know. 
Well, anybody who's ever met me knows I'm one genuine guy. I'll be an asshole to you. I'll be an asshole to your mother. I'll be an asshole to everyone. I'm a genuinely mean-ass guy. Straight up. All righty. All righty. Um, well, I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, we also have DJ Lunchbox is here to probably give some comments and questions there at Lunchbox. Uh, and we also have Chachi here, who I've seen on Twitter, been going back and forth with you. So uh, if there's any questions for the genuine jock strap, I mean, genuine jock Samson, hey, here, please man. put them in the I've chat room, send them in. Tonight. We'd love to we'll ask them all the I'm questions you want. Whoa, whoa, what was that, Jock? I've got a busy night tonight beating my wife. I could go back to beating my wife. I don't have to sit here and take people calling me names i'm a busy man you're right you're right we should be nicer to our guests um now now, 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 now wait you, now, you mentioned you mentioned your marital uh status uh <laughs> there um and there was we recently had on uh in the last few months ryan Edmonds that that also is in uh rwa um and and he has some some i don't, don't want to say marital issues marital uh Interesting way to go about things. Uh, do, do you guys? I don't know. Do you guys have a beer together and uh, and and kind of trade uh, uh, techniques there of the backhand? You know, maybe? Technically, if anyone ever knows anything, me and Ryan Edmonds go way back. Okay. We used to ride the roads together. Okay. Ryan Edmonds came to my wedding. That's how important Ryan Edmonds is to me. That's how close we are. We have gotten drunk several times before show together. And have fought and beat up everybody in the bar. We have tagged together. We've been in steel cages with a, with a team together. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So we know each other very well. Excellent. Uh, do you, you know, what, what do you think about uh, his issues in RWA with uh, with Angel and how that came about? Well, the bitch needs slap and slapper. <laughs> you know, you got to keep your bitch in line. Shit. All right. That's all right. that's a very eloquent solution, I have to say. You know, it's, it's simple. If she's going to be dumb, then treat her like she's dumb. And, you know, beat her like, like a dumb dog. You kick your dog when he shits on the floor. When your wife don't do the dishes, just give her one across the face. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. That, that that's, that's definitely genuine. That is <laughs> definitely genuine. <laughs> Oh, he is goodness. telling it like it, it is. He says telling it like it is in his household. That's that's fine. You know, take it for what it is. Be a star and all that. Um, so, so wait, 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 well, first of all, I, I want to know how did this start between uh, uh, Chachi? You you had you you got into it with Jock there. What happened there? Oh, he he stuck his uh, redneck nose where it didn't belong while I was having a conversation with a uh, a friend of the show, Joe Dabrowski. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, he, he just showed up and started commenting back, and you know. Now, 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 now he said he wanted to have a match. Now, Samson, uh, Jock, what do I call you, Mister Samson, Jock? Uh, how, how do you how do you like to be called, uh, uh, sir? Well, you can call me what you want as long as it ain't disrespectful. You can call me Jock. You can call me Samson. You can call me Mister Samson. Actually, for y'all, I want you guys to call me the champ. The champ? Uh, what are you the champ of? The world. Wife, okay. Wife beating. Hey, you, you heard you heard of Mr. Polka. You heard about Dick the Bruiser and, and them stupid Polacks up there, right? The dude with the Polish hammer. I am Mr. <laughs> Saloon now. That makes me champ. Well, well, let's watch it a little bit. I am a quarter Look, Polish myself, but uh, okay. What, what, what's, what's that, Will? Uh, I'll be. Let's, bro let's broker some peace here, okay? okay? okay I feel okay. like I feel like I feel like the champ. Here on our show, got we got off on the wrong foot with Chachi here. Everybody calling each other names, you know. Now, now, uh, Jock, don't take Chachi at face value. He's just a city boy, and Chachi, Jock is just a good old boy from the Appalachian Mountains. I, th I think there's some common ground here. I think there's got to be some common ground. You guys, I think you guys can get along. We just need well, to find it. We just need to find it. I, I, Jock, I think we should tell just me. Get on with the interview. Okay. Well, well, well first, well, 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 LB, what do you have there? Well, uh, Jock, tell me, tell me about your Saturday. How, how would you spend an ideal Saturday? You got the day off. You got the time to yourself. What would you do? So basically, if I ain't wrestling, if that is my job, if I ain't wrestling, if I'm doing anything. 
I'm going to wake up early in the morning. I'm going to train real hard. I'm going to then get done. I'm going to get drunk as hell by watching. Even though I'm from Appalachia, I live in Appalachia, Ohio, and I'm a big Ohio State football fan. And if it's in the fall, I would spend watching Ohio State beat the hell out of somebody because that's what we do. We don't take little boys in the showers like the people up at State 10 College. <laughs> and then after I watch my Buckeyes, I'd probably go get into a bar fight, probably run the bar out because that is part of my training also. Mm-hmm. And then if my wife's lucky, if I'm feeling up to it, then she might get lucky that night, but only if I'm feeling like it. All right. That's it? that's a pretty, it's a very that's full Saturday. Uh, Chachi. Yes, sir. Chachi, tell, tell us about your ideal Saturday. You're not working... Oh, I Tell wake us, there's, up. There's got to be some overlap in the schedule here. I, I wake up. I uh, probably fire up the Xbox and uh, spend some time playing that. I uh, do some work on the computer. You know, my typical. Sometimes you get in fights on Twitter. That's kind of like yeah, bar fighting, right? I, I get into kinda fights like on Twitter, fighting. but that's close. Eh. And it's then I, I too would end the day if I'm feeling up to it with giving the old lady a little loving. There you go. There you there go. There you go. <laughs> Little common ground, you both. Your old lady, you mean your computer? Oh, (laughs) listen here, redneck. (laughs) I, uh. You mean you get excited and shoot it all over the keys so you have to buy a new keyboard because they stuck together, right, baby? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, hey, let's get let's get down to your uh, your training. Uh, you you mentioned that bar fights is. Uh, a part of your training regiment. Is that how you were trained to wrestle, or did you actually uh, get real training? Well, believe it or not, I was trained. I was trained by a man, by Brian Logan. I don't know if you've ever heard of the man. He's actually the same man that trained Brian Edmonds. Okay. Uh, Brian Logan is out of Summersville, West Virginia. I don't know if you ever remember him. He was Damien and the Disciples of Sin at OVW. I'm not sure if you remember with the Stacy Cornette as their manager. Okay. Okay. Who played Finn. And uh Brian he trained me, he trained Edmund. We worked in the same training class. He I think he was a uh, a year or two ahead of me, but Edmund he he had his dad his dad helped train him also. Train Trump trained him also. But I was trained by Logan uh about seven years ago. And uh ever since I've just been beating the hell out of people because once you can fight in a bar, you can sure as hell wrestle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Comes naturally to me, baby. All right, um, and we we asked a, a similar question to Ryan Edmonds while he, when he was on the show. Um, but what do you find to be a better tool to keep your wife in line? Uh, a sack of quarters or a sack filled with bars of soap? Ooh, sack of, you mean you mean like a, a sack of quarters or jeez. You know, I'd, I'd go with the quarters because as soon as I got them beating her at the quarters, I go straight to the bar. Oh, kill two birds with one stone, then. Yeah, and you can you can say that. <laughs> well, well, he's and a good thinking man. I mean, hey, use the money both never, ways. I mean, I would I don't even need it. I just beat the hell out of people anyway. It don't matter. I don't need it, but I, I just for fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you keep saying that you don't need it, but the last, uh, I don't know, four matches or so that I've had the pleasure of filming you at ringside, it seems to have resulted to either using your boot or the cowbell. Yeah, I, I used my boot. I kicked him in the head to win. I don't know what the hell y'all saw, but I kicked him in the head to win. Wow. I don't think... Was on foot. You're really flexible then, because your boot was up in your hands. That's called DDP yoga. Check it out. <laughs> good, good. Wow. Uh, wait, well, first, it, let's go back to the cowbell thing. I, you know, of course, I remember uh, you were there in RWA uh, uh, a while ago, uh, uh, feuding with Strider, and he came back, and, and you have the cowbell now. What What is the significance of bringing the cowbell and that, and that big rope to the ring, sir? Hmm? You, you're asking me why I bring my cowbell Conway to the ring. You have a name? Well, it, it, yeah, it's Conway after the late, great Conway Twitty. Okay, okay. And, and the significance is, is the part of Ohio that I'm from is the beginning of the Appalachian foothills. 
Okay. And then it's real rough down here. You can't farm down here. You can't do anything down here. But I'm going to tell you what, you need it for, you need it basically for everyday life if you live in a country like I do. You know, you, you got pigs. You need that bull rope with pigs and bulls and horses. And that thing can sure as hell pull stuff. You know, you can get that thing around a horse's neck when that horse is running off and you're trying to catch it. And you could get up on it. It could almost help you with your grip. So I figured if it could, if it could get a hold of a horse, then maybe, maybe I could take it to the ring. I could hang some people. I could take the cow, but I could bash their head in. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care if I hurt people or not. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm just like that. I don't give a damn about anybody's well-being but my own. So that's simply the reason why I bring it to the ring, because I like to have fun after I win a match. Fair. Hmm. Good. Sorry. So, uh, I, uh, going back to watching your matches, uh, you seem to uh, not be very fond of Mikey D. I, I, you, oh, you, he... You seem uh, to be more violent towards him than anyone else I've seen you wrestle. And, and, and Matt Mason, too. Yeah, a Matt bit Mason. More. Is there reasons uh, for that? Do you just not like dancing? You know, this is a serious business. I take professional wrestling serious. It's okay. my job. It's what I wake up for every morning. And then you got some stupid idiot from New Jersey, some freaking wop, yeah. coming into my business thinking... You know, if he gets a little, shakes his ass a little bit, the people are going to cheer him more. If he shakes his ass, the girls are going to get all wet, and they're going to buy a ticket to come see. And I find that utterly offensive. It's just like Matt Mason. Matt Mason is just getting by on his pure look. He never earned anything. Everything was given to him. And that's why I had to take their asses out. All right. Because this is serious damn business to me. And then nobody else. All right, all right. No one. I do. Now, now you also had issue with uh, with Hot Wheels here. I, I I think I don't know if you're having an issue with the with the music he's playing beforehand or or, or whatnot. Uh, you we saw a little bit of that here uh, a few weeks ago. We played a little bit of the clip on the on the Mayhem show. Uh, what what issue do you take with Wheels here? I mean, he's he's a nice guy. He's he's doing his job. He's just doing his job. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. I want I want to be strictly clear on this. It has nothing to do with him being in that wheelchair. I actually have sympathy in my heart for him because he's wheelchair. Because that's not his fault. That is not his fault. But what is his fault is the fact that he's a dumb shit. That is his fault. He's constantly messing up the music. He's constantly sitting there flubbing something up. I don't take lightly to, to, to failures and the dumb shit coming into my business getting their foot in my business and messing things up for me costed me money. All right, all right, all right. You, you, <laughs> you're, you, you, you got an explanation there, Wheels. Explanation. Let's see. He seems to be the only one that has a problem with me playing music. Everybody else, like a Matt Mason or a Mikey D, seem to say, hey, great job after a show or before a show. He's the only one that seems to have that problem, so maybe he's got something in his ears that he's not listening to correctly. Well, this just goes and proves the point. He doesn't, Mike D and Matt Mason don't make all the girls moist either. They must make little Hot Wheels there moist. It must grease up your freaking, your tires there, buddy, because only thing they're doing is kissing your ass. I'm the only one being honest here. I'm the only one at RWA. I'm the only honest person that has ever stepped foot in Western Pennsylvania. Mm, mm. And you can quote me on that. That's quite a broad statement. Is it, mm, okay. Mm. Is the only that, honest, uh, only honest person in Western Pennsylvania? I mean, that's no, a... Who's ever stepped foot in Western PA. And uh, do you realize that by messing with wheels, you're you're messing with the guy who could make you come out to something like... It's raining men or Barbie from, girl from the chat room. Barbie We're girl. We're actually kind of getting requests from the chat room on yeah. what you could come out to at the next show. Hey, tell him that's all fine and dandy, but hey, Matt Mason ain't gonna be there. Matt Mason's hurt. 
Mikey D's hurt. Hey, there ain't nobody there to protect you. Well, it's all it's all because uh, you can't beat them in a match without using your boot or your cowbell. Oh, or a chair. Yeah, or a chair. Here we go again. Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I, You know, granted, I did put Matt Mason out with the chair. That's part of the good time that I have. You know, granted, I kicked Mikey D so hard in the head with my boot. I knocked him out. That's on him. But the, the last time when Matt Mason came there and he got in the way of my son, I was going to take the cowbell and I was going to smash Hot Wheels' head in. He had to come get my business. So when he did, I had the best man at my wedding, the butcher, Jeremy Madrock, to come and watch my back to make sure that Matt Mason wasn't doing no funny business and all the cheap shots that he came and took on Jock Sampson. You see, me and the butcher together. I don't know if anyone's ever known this, but me and him used to be a tag team. Something up in Cleveland called Team Hip Toss. Hip Toss? Team Hip Toss. Hip Toss. Team Hip Toss. Okay. We wrestled for J.T. Lightning, God rest his soul. All right. The great promoter up in Cleveland All Pro Wrestling. When we wrestled Matt Mason in the past and his former tag team partner, Robbie Starr, and several others like Tommy Rich, Ricky Morton, you just go name them on and on, Team Hip Hop. Team Hip Hop has beat the hell out of them all. And Hot hmm. Wheels, it may be me that gets you, it may be the butcher. But you go ahead and play that game. I'll let you slide, but you make one mistake, Hot Wheels. Either the jock's going to get you, or you'll get butchered one way or another. All right. All you right. know, well, go you ahead. know, Jock, it's kind of funny you say that. It's like you're saying I might not have somebody to watch my back because you think you took out two guys that watch my back. I have two other guys that are looking. And I'll make sure I play something extra special for team hip toss. Maybe it's raining men. Chocolate rain. Go ahead. There you go. Go ahead, buddy. I mean, you're only signing your own death warrant. I mean that. This uh, just proves the show. This goes to prove to everybody that you're dumb as hell. You're not a smart guy. Hell, I would enjoy it. This will be the bright, brightest part of my day. All right. All you know right. What I mean, I don't even care if I wrestle. I, if I just come up there and split your cranium open, it'll be a win-win for me. Wow. I think we need to sell this down, and I can't think of a better way to sell this down a little bit, but, that, uh, but uh, questions from the chat room. Uh, so we, we have a couple that have been coming through here. Um, so I, I, we, had, we had a few questions, and uh, let's say we're going to go right through them, you know, and see what they got. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find this one by, I think Riz did it. Oh, no, this is actually from Bobby F. J. Town. He wants to know if you've ever watched the movie Deliverance, and have you ever squealed like a pig? I don't know the reference. No, I, I have seen the movie Deliverance. Okay. And, and to answer his question, I have never squealed like a pig, but I made his mother squeal like one on, on several occasions. There you go, Bobby. Uh, he's been through Johnstown and says hello to your mother. Um, okay, uh, what else we got here? Um, we had a few more. Um, yeah, we had another question from Riz that said, uh, uh, hip toss, is that like your only move? And was that a team maneuver? That's just a name, baby. Okay. I have plenty of moves. Did you have? That's what happens. Get drunk with Jock Sampson on a Saturday night. You come up with great names. <laughs> like Team Hip Toss. Awesome, awesome. Uh, question for Jock from uh, Russell Fan. Tracy oh, Smith I'm sorry. It. Tracy Smothers likes it. Oh, good. Tracy Smothers likes it. It's got to be good. The rest, if no one likes it, they can suck my dick. <laughs> And probably his, too. All right. WrestleFan uh, here on the show just completed, of course, his Indie Minute. He's the master of all things indie here on the show. He asked for uh, for Jock Sampson. Uh, I know that recently in AIW, you uh, you were in your war against the Duke uh, and have joined forces with the, the Submission Squad. Uh, we had Gary J here on the show a couple weeks ago, or sorry, a couple months ago. Uh, what do you think about them, and how do they mesh with you? Well, apparently... I just uh, read a little memo is is I had Gary J, Pierre, and Evan handle a little business of mine with the Duke. You see, I had them watch my back a little bit. You see, where were they watching my back 
when the Duke put me through a table of an absolution for AIW. Where were they when I was sitting there bleeding all over God and country? Where were they when I was sitting in the bar before that show needing a beer? Where were they? They're talented individuals. Those people have been all over the world. But where were they when I needed them? All right, all right. Uh, good, good. Uh, also from the chat room, Jay Hofa asks, uh, more serious question, uh, uh, what's your favorite brand of pig's feet? Jesus H. Christ, really? <laughs> Who's going to ask me about pig's feet? Actually, Jay Hova, but yeah. <laughs> Who, Jay Hova? Jay Hova 301. Oh, gee, that's a stupid-ass name. <laughs> I've heard one. I'm going to tell you something, Jay. I have never ate pig's feet in my life. i tell you what I have done is I eat steak every night because I make more money than you. Okay. I make a lot of money to eat steak and potatoes every night and drink it down with a cold Coors Light. Okay. You can't afford steak. You have to go to McDonald's and lead off the Happy Meal, the dollar menu. I've never ate pig's feet, horse's ass. All right, all right. Let's see what else we got here uh, real quick. Um, <laughs> yes, blood over. Yes, I think he did say that. Um, I'm not going to ask this one about paint chips from uh, Riz. Um, all right, I think with that, we need to, to wrap this up here before. We go. Well, first, of course, RWA uh, in uh, just under two weeks here on September 15th at West Newton Gymnasium in West Newton, PA. RWALive.com, of course, is fall free for all. Four? Are we up to four on that there, Wheels? Yes, we are. All We're right. up to four. Um, so, I mean, you're on the and, card. I'm oh, sorry? Yep. Yes, and I am on the card. You Me are on the King, card. King Hipsoft is on the card. Okay, okay. What do you have in store uh, uh, for for uh, RWA? Uh, excuse me, RWA that night, sir. Well, it looks like me and my my best friend Jeremy the Butcher Madrox are going to face off against Joey Vengeance and Juice Jennings in a tag team encounter. Okay. <laughs> Which we all know that Team Hip Toss is going to win the whole damn thing. I'm putting my money on the A list. Oh, kiss my ass, you stupid ass son of a bitch. You are dumb as hell. I don't have that much time, Jock, to kiss that. Yeah, you might want to try reading the book sometime. It might make you smarter. <laughs> all right, all right. And finally, let's end this. We've got our big question <laughs> to come at you. And I think it's rather appropriate here. This is yes. the question we've asked everybody for the last up, several months. Uh, came up with by uh, uh, a big contributor to the show, Bo Diggity. I want to leave it to you. I think it's fitting uh, for, uh, for for Chachi to ask this. Yeah, uh, like Sork said, this question is asked to every single wrestler. It's kind of a uh, personality profiling question. Um, okay. If you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be and why? Holy shit. Really? Yep. That's a personality question? It is. Oh, so we can Jesus get to know you. Bro. You know, asking to get to know me is you asking me and said, hey, man, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Why don't you tell me something? Did you ask me about a vegetable? But if I could say anything, I would probably be the world's biggest cucumber. So you would be a giant yeah. dick. Pretty much. Hey, <laughs> you know what? At least I have a dick. Oh. Oh, oh, all right. I was going to say he's going to be a kumquat, but hey, that works. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Go back to loving Joni there, Chachi. All right, thanks a lot. Jock Sampson, he's at Jock Sampson. On uh on on Twitter, that's that's with no P. It's uh, you told me the other uh, the other show it's biblical, right? Yeah, it's, it's biblical. If you, if you put a P on there again, I'm gonna smack you. I'm sorry, it. I'm sorry that, that somebody gave me bad information when I put it on the DVD, sir. Uh, so we'll see I also again. Got a Facebook, I got a Facebook. Got too. A Facebook, yes. Facebook dot com slash Jock Samson. No P. No P. No P. Exactly. I, I'm really surprised you know how to use Twitter and Facebook, Jock. Hey, 
hey, your girlfriend came over to the house, you know, for a little cunnilingus and showed me how to operate it. So, you know, I don't even have to pay the bitch. Wow, wow. I don't know how she uh, performed cunnilingus on you. But anyways, well, that's beside <laughs> the point there. Thank you, the sir, very much. We'll see you at rwalive.com. Anywhere else you're going to be in the next couple weeks? You want to plug? I will be in Moorhead, Kentucky this Thursday defending my new OCW heavyweight title. Okay. And then Saturday, I will be in for Ohio Championship Wrestling. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Out of in Coshocton, Ohio, this Saturday, wrestling Dusty Dillinger. OCW is a real top promotion. A lot of people should get there and check them out. Great draw, great wrestlers, great everything. All right. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, Jock Sampson. Uh, real pleasure to talk with you tonight. Go check them out. All those places. Go look them up and uh, and uh, tweet them or Facebook them if you want to find out where those are and more if you have some questions for Jock Sampson yourself. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to take a look at what's going on with WMS Gold this week that you're going to get exclusively if you bought that app we talked about at the beginning of the show and a look at what's else is uh, coming out from Sorgatron Media. And we'll be back with Remember When. Story. Look, one, it's, not it's nothing to be ashamed of. Back. It's your job, all right? And second <laughs> off, you know what? Uh, fucking, you make a sign. I mean, just because we heard about it here in the North. Start a show? Let's start a show. What the fuck is what? that? <laughs> what was that? What, what the fuck was that? What? This? This what? Lighting transition. I don't... What's that was cool. This? Dude, you're doing oh. the Star Wars screen wipe. <laughs> Sequin motorcycle jacket. Sequin bro tank. <laughs> Sequin tuchin suit. Sequined Dustin Duster Touching If you want to come and get it when I spit it I'm the best to rip it best to whip it yeah that's a P on a fitted on a mission to get in and flip your team I'm winning Whizzy sipping I'm sick of the B in every second Sick of them It is a special escape the cage weapons cage match On the track I'll be writing it Conscious I'll be fighting it Kick snare boom bat long as they be liking it all right, guys, back again from the break. Thanks for sticking with us here. Uh, and now is time for that that segment that we all know and love. Remember when? Now, this week on Remember When, uh, of course, I think one of the most entertaining things to happen in a long time we've been seeing the last uh, couple weeks uh, is the anger management uh, therapy sessions, at which, which, which ended up in a hug-out match. <laughs> on uh, Raw last night, I know it was, you know, a lot of us were just completely into it, uh, and, and, and it's been great. So I thought maybe we go around and, and, and think about uh, remembering uh, friendships in wrestling. Some friendships that you just enjoyed, that that really kind of, you know, stuck with you. Like, I think this will for, for several years now. Now, for me, there's, there's one that, that comes straight to my mind, and that is the combination of head cheese. Think back, go back with me to back in the day. It was a uh, kind of a weird parent. I don't know how it got started. It was uh, Steve Blackman, who was like the man from Anvil, PA, the, the the master of weapons, the guy that almost killed Shane Shane McMahon, um, and teaming up with Al Snow. And Al Snow was, I th he still had he still had head. He was still doing that whole thing. Um, his dog just died. His dog had just died. And he ate it. And he ate it. But that was this was post that. This was like that was post that. For it. So um, for some huh. reason they they were like, hey, we need a team name. Head because he's had head. He was everybody want Al Snow and Cheese. I don't know how Cheese came up with Blackman, but it was it was a pretty good odd couple uh, situation there, which of course culminated with uh, well, first of all, Steve Blackman with the the head Cheese from from the Green Bay Packers, uh, he, he would make him wear. Um, and every time, he would look like he was going to kill Al Snow. Uh, but, it, of course, culminating in WrestleMania, where we had a man come out in a giant cheese suit. And then both of them beat him up. So, I think that was a decent payoff for that, for, for a nice comedy angle that ran for probably too many months than, than it meant to. So, you, you forgot about the best segment ever from Head Cheese. Hmm. And I do not remember if it was from a Raw or a SmackDown. But Al Snow through the head cheese thing tries to loosen black men up, I guess, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Make him so for some reason he takes him to a farm somewhere. 
uh, <laughs> in the middle of some farm area. Uh, for some reason, to like and to teach, he's teaching him how to milk a cow, and then uh, so Blackman's milking this cow, and the cow squirts him in the eye. And then Blackman takes his look on his face. Alistair grabs one of the farm, the and the farmer's like an older sort of dude, like leads him away. Uh, and the camel just pants the snow, and allegedly Steve Blackman kicked this cow in the face and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. And it's the greatest segment. I believe. It has to be on YouTube somewhere. You we'll need to, to find that. that. We'll have to look it up. Shachi, I think you got the next one there. I do. Stone Cold and Vince McMahon. Oh, when he wanted to be his buddy, when he wanted to be his friend, he started singing to him. Yes, he started singing to him. He bought him a cowboy hat, and this was when Kurt Angle was around. Mm-hmm. And Kurt mm-hmm. Angle wanted a cowboy hat, and what did he do? He yep. gave Kurt Angle that little red children's <laughs> like strap on That was hat. probably my favorite time for Kurt Angle ever. It was amazing. Excellent. How about, uh, how about you, LB? Um, well, uh, since this is all sparked by Kane, I'm, I'm reminded of Kane's storied, sorted, terrible past with uh, all of his people who have been friends. Um, he's been, he, he likes to be friends with little guys, uh, friends with X-Pac, and that ended poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, friends with RVD also <laughs> ended poorly. The same way, I think. They uh, dove through the ropes at him, and he swatted them out of the air of the chair, if I don't <laughs> if I remember correctly. Um, I, d- didn't he go through the same thing? Not the air swatting, but the the business. With, he did that with Booker T. He did mm-hmm. it with just well, that. anybody you can little, name. <coughs> it's an old wrestling trope. Let's be friends with Kane, and uh, and then eventually get beaten up by Kane. Mm-hmm. Well, Xbox was a little different because the Xbox then fucked Tori. That was apparently dating Kane, and then that whole scenario sort That'll of thing. Happen. I think X and then Xbox said something about Kane's dick being uh, burnt, burnt off in the fire or something. <laughs> Aside from that, the mega powers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice <That's> transition. <laughs> and that is it. All right. How Just about that you? they existed. <laughs> how about you, Wheels? Uh, honestly, the Rock and Sock connection. Nice, nice. I mean, every segment was entertaining. This is your life was one of the funniest ones ever. Awesome. What about you, Wrestle fan? Uh, I take you back to 2002 when I started watching wrestling as a youngin, even younger, you know, of how young I can be, uh, and a little friendship that developed, a really tight knit friendship uh, between Billy Gunn and Chuck Palumbo. Mm. Uh, <laughs> now the friendship, the friendship, sort the of very uh, best of buddies. The friendship sort of, es- I mean, yeah, they were sharing headbands. I mean, yeah. Uh, the friendship <laughs> escalated, uh, and by it escalated, sure I mean right. it involved butt sex. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the one that sticks out in my mind because that's one of my the, that's one of the first things I saw as a wrestling fan. And that was your first impression that you said, "Man, wrestling is definitely something I need to follow." I'm like, this is why my mom doesn't want me watching it. Mm. <laughs> From the chat room, uh, Riz says, "Rosie and Hurricane." Um, <laughs> He also goes into "You look so good to me." That was probably the best. Uh, Bobby brings up Brock and Kurt drinking milk backstage. Uh, Mister M- America and Zach Gowan from uh, the Elixir. 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 It's been a while since it's been in there. I forget how to say it. Um, there you go, team. Charlie, what's Charlie Haas and um, Rico? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Hyde and Rank and Michael Cole. <laughs> awesome awesome why is it all the last ones have to do with butt sex uh to a lesser oh here we go uh uh let's what do you say i'm friends with a few guys oh this is something else okay um all right excellent and with that let's go to butt sex in the ring surprise butt sex out of the ring <laughs> and with that let's go to our usual point at this time mad mike's minutes of mayhem Gentlemen, boys and girls, fans and friends across the land, it's Mad Mike here once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now, um, Raw was interesting, I guess, tonight, uh, or last night as it were. Um, I like the whole CM Punk angle, but everything else just kind of seemed like filler. I mean, the AJ thing, 
Are we really going to have another dispute over a general manager already? It's... I mean, unless they're just biding time until Mick Foley takes the reins, or Paul Heyman, or something. They, they need to figure it out, either that, or just decide not to have a general manager. Or just have Booker T take control of both shows. I'd be okay with anything at this point, because the AJ thing... I think we'd all rather see her in the ring doing crazy things and not trying to act like she isn't crazy. Uh, as far as TNA goes, they did math a little bit better this week. Uh, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think they inadvertently revealed that Kurt Angle might be in Aces and Eights. Um, I've also heard that some people thought one of the bigger guys was Samoa Joe. But I really think the ringleader, the, uh, the Bane-speaking guy that does all the talking is Abyss, you know, Abyss, or, um, or Joseph Park, or the other, or both, or all of them, I mean, it's just very odd, and I hope that at No Surrender there's some sort of resolution to it, although I'm glad that they didn't strip Austin Aries of the belt, because that would have been horrible, um, the only the only other things I really noticed on Raw, Eve is trying to do a different character where she's trying to act like she has, you know, a good moral compass, which is an interesting take, and it looks like Jack Swagger has to go back to the future. Yeah, I had to do it. I'm sorry, um, but. The biggest development on Raw was what happened in the final two minutes, and that takes us to Mad Mike's Wrestling Fact of the Week, brought to you by our friends at WrestlingData.com. Now, Paul Heyman. Um, I bet you guys didn't know that he actually wrestled quite a bit. Not, all right, not really quite a bit, but still, he's had... Like, apparently in his last stint in WWE, when, EC, when WWE ECW was still around... He would wrestle Rob Van Dam in Extreme Rules matches on house shows. News to me. Uh, by the way, he never won any of those. But, Paul Heyman does have an undefeated record against four wrestlers. Four fairly big names, too. Edge, Sabu, and both Hardys. Now, as far as who he has the worst record against, of course, that has to be some legendary figure. I'm not going to lie, it's Missy Hyatt. Apparently, Paul Heyman and Missy Hyatt have had ten different matches, and he's lost all of them. So, yeah, that's, that's where we stand with that, and, uh, well, this is Mad Mike for the minute. Peace, bitches. Thanks, Mike, for those minutes of mayhem. We really do appreciate it, folks. We're back here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and I want to fucking talk about Monday Night Raw. I don't want to beat around the bush. I want to get straight to it. Straight to, not, well, the, the, main event, the flagship show. Um, okay, so I've got this uh, interesting thing at work. I, I work for the newspaper. It's a really great job. I, I, I enjoy it. It pays my bills, um, and I, uh, I, it, it's good. It's really good. And on top of that, I have another perk um, at my job, and that's uh, my boss uh, is a very nice lady. And, you know, she's a boss, so, you know, they can be cantankerous sometimes, that's fine, whatever. But she can't, under any circumstances, hit me. No matter what happens, <laughs> no matter what I do, she's not allowed to hit me. And I, apparently, I learned last night on Raw, I'm allowed to beat the shit out of her <laughs> with no repercussions! Because... When you hit your boss, they apparently lose the ability to fire you. What the fuck was that? I, I, haven't, the- I haven't mentioned Vicky Guerrero at all on this show, except for, you know, playful little things about how she gives me a giant erection. And that's still true. But the fact <laughs> remains, that bitch needs to go. What are we getting from this feud? There, we're not gaining a goddamn thing from having Vicky Guerrero on television, except for uh, screeching and my girlfriend yelling at me, asking me, "Why are we watching this? What is wrong with her? Why won't she shut up?" 
Seriously. I, I, I'm all for suspending disbelief in professional wrestling. That's all you can do. You have to do it with the wrestlers and the storylines and the moves and the matches and the fans. I'm suspending so much disbelief. I'm retaining water. But the fact of the matter is <laughs> when they tell you that your boss can't Sorry, hit you and so you hit them, they can still fire you. <laughs> Thoughts. I'm with, I'm with you. I, I'm with Zero, and uh, not to his degree. He says, "Not only that, why not just book Vicky versus Big Show or something to punish her?" Like I was waiting for her to just like come around. for everyone. I, I would. I'd like to see her just come around and be like, "Well, you know, you're you're you have a wrestling contract, blah blah blah, because you've done it, blah blah blah." Uh, remember that WrestleMania thing? Well, I'm going to put you against. Uh, you know what? I really would have loved to happen. I think you'll back me up, LB. I really would have loved that. Like maybe not at that point, but maybe we'll do it next week. Uh, she comes out and is like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not allowed to touch you people, but apparently I need a bodyguard. Boom. Karma. Yes. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't that be the greatest thing? I know she's not technically yeah, with the company now happen, or anything no. like that, but that, that would, would be, be the best thing. Right? Yeah. And, and you bring could actually karma, hear the words. Protect you know from what? The bitches. Vicky, bring in, bring in karma someone else. Karma is a bitch. Just any number of people. <laughs> what was that, Wheels? I said, uh, and you could actually hear AJ going, you know what, Vicky? Karma is a bitch. <laughs> no, they wouldn't say it. They uh, tried a new word for bitch, but then it wouldn't match with the cliche, and then that's just mm-hmm. dumb. Um, push lunchbox, push. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that and was, I agree with, and I, uh, I'll say I agree with you, lunchbox about Vicky Guerrero. I feel like in the le- there was times when Vicky Guerrero, very much like AJ, had depth to her character, and she was you know interesting. But she's been doing, she's been managing Dolph Ziggler for what, like a year and a half now? Mm hmm. The two years? And she hasn't done anything new. It's, it's, and it's been the same thing with Dolph Ziggler for, you know, however long. It's, it's, and it's the same thing, like we were complaining with AJ, that she, it's, it's not the same. You know? Yep. That's my thoughts. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no one else has yeah, anything to say. Okay. <laughs> I don't get. I don't understand why should we? Why we should give any parts of a fuck if they don't? Mm-hmm. Why should we make the effort that they're not making? Mm-hmm. It did feel like the writers just didn't think that whole segment through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you never know. Maybe this is something that goes goes around to something. Maybe maybe. I don't know. I, but why I though? Wanna see, I mean, I want to see like what where does this end up? Maybe it'll, something will happen next week that makes sense of this. You know, you never know. I think it went too long to be something like that to just set up. You know, what, yeah, remember remember when we had Big Show crying in the middle of the ring in Pittsburgh <laughs> forever? Uh, yeah, and look where that that went to something at a pay per view, a pretty big thing at a pay per view, uh, where where you interfered uh, with that match. But <laughs> wasn't necessarily a good thing. No, no, no. But it's it, it's it's the way around to the goal. So. I'm sure. It, no, I'm sure they're uh, they're going to lead it to something. They wouldn't do it if they're not planning something. I'm just saying the segment. I don't get why they need this. Like this feud doesn't make much <laughs> sense to me. And if they're going to try to turn AJ back into the crazy GM, then it's like, well. And there's other avenues of doing it. I, I get to the point where I just want to say, fuck it, have a wrestle. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So, I, aside from that, I mean, well, you know, I thought uh, my feelings on Raw last night were it was the most tolerable three hours I've watched since the 1000th episode. Yeah. yeah. Not, I, I, think that's a shot. I think that's a ringing endorsement in the long runs. Um, but I wasn't annoyed by, by recaps all the time. Um, and and, it's, have a whole and, lot of them. and it felt like a lot happened. Um, so I mean, I was thoroughly like entertained and not like, what the hell is this crap? You know, we didn't have like a Divas match that just completely went off the rails. We didn't have um, a, a lot of kind of missed stuff. You strung you strung me along with CM Punk throughout the show. They're doing really mm-hmm. good with that. We had something at the beginning with CM Punk and came back out with Sheamus. He came out and walked away from from the title versus title match, <laughs> and he came back at the end for you know what we got. You know, it, there was a lot of reason for me to stick around for three hours. And <laughs> and that's the, the, no, the, but that should be the goal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the long run. And, and I think they really accomplished it with, with what they did with CM Punk last night. I mean, you I mean, you kind of to a lesser degree the week before with the I'll think about it, meaning I want to buy you time to stick around to that two hour two. Yeah. You know, um, but that and, and they're not going to they're not going to hit it every week. 
they never hit it every week when they're doing two hours live. Right. You know, something's going to go wrong, and it just uh, it's kind of doomed to fail more often than not. Yeah. Uh, but, also, yeah. side note. And I, I agree with you completely that I thought Raw was definitely great. The CM Punk stuff and the anger management stuff definitely made that Raw. Oh, the best. I want to be yeah, able that to... that actually uh, made me laugh. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, Josh. The, what, the one thing I do want to say, okay. am, am I the only one that really didn't like Miz on commentary? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. 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 I thought he was, I, he was I all right. Him I better. I'm it. glad I didn't get good. to listen to Jerry Lawler. That's a, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a plus. But I just felt like it's it was a sense of him like trying too hard. I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, it, he's no CM Punk on up there, but um, I thought he did. I thought he did fine. I thought he was great. He wasn't trying too run. hard. No, no. I mean, I, there was poor parts where he didn't even try. He just he had absolutely no idea what to say, and it showed. Mm-hmm. Like it was literally him. It was genuine. Just filling in at the the announce table. But it was interesting. It was interesting that he wasn't super heel all night. Yeah. Like he was like. That is true. Like, but but my, my only problem with that was, why is your intercontinental champion not doing anything but talk? Yes. Yeah. Why? I mean, put it, put it didn't even. They didn't, they didn't even. I mean, you, uh, they didn't even use that time to set him up for something. You have knighted champions in two weeks. Yeah. You honestly yeah. could have. You could have put Josh Matthews out there to play up with the whole Kane thing. Yeah, except he got hurt, so you got to give him some off time. But like, uh, he, he may or may not show up this this next week. Back to the anger yeah. management thing. I want to be able to cast fire from a trash <laughs> can on kidding. demand. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to be. Great. I want to be able that to walk great. into the office, throw something in a trash can, and be like, "What's up?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, those segments great. were amazing, and it wasn't just Kane and Daniel Bryan that made it amazing. Harold, <laughs> shut up, Harold. <laughs> they had a poll on WWE.com about who was going to graduate from anchor management first, with the options being Kane, Daniel Bryan, and Harold. And Harold won with like forty nine percent. And can we talk about the interactivity? Uh, I actually uh, with the app here. Let me put it on myself. There you go. This is the fir- this is the first time I've ever seriously voted on one of them. Their hashtag polls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, me too. Because it was too great. You know, it really kind of appealed to us that we're making porn names a couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. That's, that's I mean, true. Really did. 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 something or you know, yeah, double meat sam, uh, you know, uh, triple meat pepperoni pizza mm-hmm. something. But you know, but I really think I, I I stuck around. I I was like, let's see what this is. Let's see what Rock Active is about. Um, I I brought up on the iPhone and later on the iPad when my phone died. Uh, on the WWE uh, app. Uh, so you hit hit the, <laughs> you, you hit the Raw Active button at the top, and uh, and you get like they update it every so often. Like it's not real often, but they'll have polls like you know something like you know the Herald thing, you know. Um, and they'll have like fun facts like like when King came out. Uh, you know, and did his pyro. They had the first pyro in WWE, 1990, and it had like the, how many seconds on Raw they start with, and everything like that. They had like art and everything like that. Like a lot, sometimes like them just working out, like a picture of them working out before the match. You know, it's just like really, it's like WWE magazine updated real time. Harold and Kane go to White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's from the chat. Yeah, it's from Bobby in the chat room. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I think that's 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 something I'm going to bring up and they, and have kind of side by side. I mean, it's going to be horrible because I'm going to be watching Raw as if I wasn't already doing this for other means. Uh, but I'm going to have my hangout up with uh, you guys on the computer. I'm, I got the TV up with uh, w- with Raw playing, and I'm going to have like my phone or my iPad on the side, you know, <laughs> a, a, you know, for Raw Active just to see what what updates to, for us to laugh at or whatever. Um, it's becoming a multi-screen experience on Monday nights for three <laughs> hours straight. And it's a little bit exhausting to a certain degree if you're really getting into it. So, also, haven't touts disappeared a little bit? Did we get tired yeah. of touts real quick here? Yeah. So, I mean, which I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, I, I it, maybe maybe when they have a reason, they'll use it. Um, who Somebody touted after their thing. David Otunga. David Otunga, yeah, because it, he was he's getting Ooh, involved in stuff. So... I thought that was great. I thought that that was great. I, I I think they did a lot of stuff right this week on Raw, uh, and, and I'm excited to see where they go. And like, really, Night of Champions, like, usually not is not one I get into. So going into it, Insert Coin and Mayhem Show have become merged. We, they have. Yes, uh, they started a hashtag WWE Lego. See no evil. <laughs> 
Lego <laughs> Evil, Go, uh, Lego Marine Four. <laughs> oh, I would never play Lego Marine Four. WB Lego. Uh, uh, what was that one with the word? Chaperone. Lego Chaperone. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. Lego, was, Lego Suburban Commando. What was mm-hmm. the uh, Big Show one? Knucklehead was yeah, it? I was Lego, trying to remember. Lego Knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yes, knucklehead, and actually forget. a very decent movie. Uh, Lego the Day, I guess. No, yeah. Mm. Let go of the day. <laughs> let, go legendary. let go of the day. <laughs> let go of the day. Yeah, let, let go of the legendary. <laughs> let go of 12 rounds. What is it with 12 rounds reloaded having uh, uh, Randy Orton in it? That's dumb. What the hell? Yeah, he's, he's gone again. Yeah, yeah. Orton's going to be gone again for a while because he's filming that thing. That's why he's doing kind of Sorry, you caught stuff. me moving my camera. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he'll, he'll go to the papers if he has to. Well, that's good to know. Um, Lego see no evil. I wanted to touch on. Okay, we talked about the hug it out thing. One of the gr- fantastic video that Russell fan posted in the uh, in the oh, Facebook group yes. uh, of him, where he's just randomly hugging people. He says, "I was ready to embrace a man." Uh, yeah. Go check that out. We and, uh, that no, and the best part was he mentioned that <laughs> back home in Aberdeen, Washington, his nickname was Mister Hug It Out. Nice. <laughs> Oh. Um, I, and I also wanted to touch on, I think Riz put this in the Facebook uh, open group. Uh, uh, so The Rock will really <laughs> kick your ass. I want you to know this. If you ever encounter The yeah. Rock I wanna, and you're stealing some shit, back the fuck off. Go ahead and explain the rest of the story, and then I'll explain why he should have been arrested. Okay, this is what I... This is what, yeah, I know, I know. But he was in a different country, so maybe it doesn't. Um, I'm sh- uh, so ahead. according to this article in The Sun... They were filming a scene for Fast and the Furious 6, are they up to now? Is yeah. that mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, where he's an FBI agent, you see how, what he looks like here on the video. He, pretty much what he looked like in, in, in Fast and the Furious 5, Fast 5. Yeah. Um, so apparently they were doing in the middle of doing a scene. He saw two guys in hoodies, so they're referred to the story as hoodies, um, <laughs> trying to break into... Raiding the set. They raiding were raiding the, set. the set and trying to leave with props and shit yeah yeah and he so he he stops what he's doing runs after them flashing his f prop fbi badge yeah and scares them off um impersonating law officials <laughs> is a crime in any country i'm pretty <laughs> sure i'm pretty sure so so yeah so whether he gets any grief on that uh he's being kind of shown up as as a bit of a hero there so, so that was that was kind of the what the hell story of the was the boots to boots the burglars. Yeah, was, that was and now now, uh, now the Rock uh, did not start this, but WWE took it upon themselves during Raw on Monday night to start a hashtag boots the burglars. Yes, what? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, boots the hamburglers. First, <laughs> I, I saw boots the burgers from Riz. <laughs> I think um, <laughs> Lego Fast Five. Why not? Why not? Um, so I, that was the pretty holy shit story of the week. Um, in other theft news, uh, I think I think WrestleFan, you had this up. Um, so apparently oh, somebody yeah. stole the TNA Heavyweight Championship. Two that, of them. That fine, fine championship designed by them. a local uh, Wildcats belt here in the Western PA area. Yeah, Two yeah. of them? Yes. What happened well, they, here? They stole a replica version that was priced at like 300 bucks or something. Okay. But they also stole the actual version. That, and then, But here's the update of the story. The actual version that, when it was claimed, was priced at $6,000. Mm-hmm. TNA has apparently gotten into some trouble because they gave misleading information about the belt. Apparently, it's not worth six thousand dollars. It's worth like two thousand seven hundred fifty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they may be in some trouble for that. Um, and basically, they were trying to they would they were wasn't giving complete information about it because they didn't want it to get out. Because <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want it to get out either. Because that's how do you do that? How does that happen? <laughs> oh, awesome. you know. It, well, I was going to go over the Impact Zone to watch some TNA, and I just stumbled backstage and took their belts. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, i got to say something about this. Why? Because Chachi knows, Sorg knows. That belt, even as a replica, is heavy as hell. Why would you want the real one anyways? The, the replica <laughs> is just as good. 
Bo Diggity says the belt is overvalued on a number of levels by TNA. <laughs> 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 that's the yeah, that's about right. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, this is another one um, thrown at us by uh, Charmin. Um, Charmin, oh. What? <laughs> From uh, WrestlingInc.com. The richest professional wrestlers in the world. Interesting list here. Of course, The Rock, is uh, is net worth is at $70 million. Of course, he's doing movies. That makes sense. Uh, Steve Austin, okay. Uh, John Cena, $35 million. Okay, at number wow, three. Kurt Angle's still at $20 million. Big Show. Big Show at four with $30 million. He's above Triple H at 25 Kurt Angle at twenty. Then it goes Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels. I mean, the list kind of makes sense because these are guys that haven't done much. Uh, well, maybe I've done a little bit outside of wrestling. You got to think this isn't just money they made from wrestling itself. Taker, Foley. Foley's at a, number 10. Above. A, what's that? I'm surprised Brock Lesnar is so low. And uh, Bradshaw. Bradshaw, you're surprised he's so low. Yeah, well, yeah, he, Bradshaw. yeah, yeah. He, well, he's got this. I don't know. Well, he's not doing like movies and stuff. And I think that would be more I than don't, the stuff he's doing because he he's trying to market stuff. Like he had like an energy drink he was pushing and whatever other financial <laughs> stuff he was into. Didn't know? we drink the energy drink it's, on the show and it tasted like ass? Did we have his? Yes, we did. We the, the Mama Juana. Mama Juana. Yeah, yeah, the Mama Juana you guys had. I remember that. That was just. The faces that you guys made for <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for like sexual prowess or something like that. I think that yes. was part well, of it. Yeah. Yes, which is a smart move. Like, so all it was you a guys group of, it group of guys just all drank it together. That was smart. <laughs> uh, then goes Bret Hart, Edge, Lesnar, Goldberg, uh, Batista. Again, these are guys doing a lot of stuff outside of wrestling. Uh, then we go to guys like Mysterio, Kevin Nash, CM Punk, Jerry Lawler. Lawler still does a lot of shit in Memphis. And as we're getting down around $7 million, $6 million for Randy Orton. Uh, Del Rio, number 23. This is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. Hulk Hogan at $5 million. Now, there is a note to this that says, a quote, uh, according to this, according to the article, uh, I guess this is from another article even, um, Hogan lost an estimated $25 million in his divorce from ex-wife Linda. She was awarded 70% of the company's, of the couple's liquid assets, a 40% stake uh, in uh, all of Hogan's companies, six luxury cars, and millions more in property. So, I mean, he would have been a lot higher on this list. He would have been. That's what happens when you uh, go balls deep in your daughter. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, he would have been around, uh, you He'd know. He'd be in, like, the top five. Yeah, he would have definitely been in the top five, at least above Big Show and stuff. And he's one of the guys that was, like, got kind of the best businessman of the group. He's the guy that came from the 80s and you know, yes, his movies sucked, but he did a lot of good <laughs> his business. His movies and, sucked? And like Suburban Commando, Sorg? <laughs> you don't say anything about Suburban Commando. Suburban Cam Commando was a good weekend, movie. Okay? Christopher Lloyd is a fine actor. Sword. And that chick that played Sword. Olive Oil. What? Be a star. Be a star. Apologize to the wrestle bitch. He should apologize to me. <laughs> apologize. should apologize to Suburban apologize. fucking Commando. Apologize. And the Undertaker. Apologize to wrestle uh, bitch. That reminds me. Can we talk about the be a star thing? All right, real quick. Because I, what? I, wait, uh. wait. We didn't finish this. We didn't finish this. Oh, go ahead, finish it. Finish it. But all right. Yeah, yeah, other yeah. I, I wanted have... to mention that. Um, go ahead. Uh, Vin Vince McMahon, uh, not on the list. Uh, he's only sort of considered a wrestler, but he's his current val. He's valued at five hundred five hundred million. That's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ric Flair is actually under uh, Hulk Hogan, also at $5 million, uh, considering <laughs> his his financial issues um, and multiple, multiple divorces and legal issues. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Be a star, wrestling fan. Okay. Because I don't have a problem with be a star because, you know, oh, they're sponsored by a wrestling company and wrestling means people fight people and, that, you know, that whatever. But they aired to be a star commercial on Raw with a bunch of celebrities in it. And one of those celebrities was Perez Hilton. How the oh. fuck is he in that commercial? When he makes his living on bullying people. Mm -hmm. He We're makes his living, living by now. taking MS no, Paint have, and drawing like slut on like celebrity photos. I don't know so. anything about Perez Hilton, so I, uh, I can't. Cum splashes. I, yeah, he draws like MS Paint cum splashes on celebrity videos. True. Yeah, and call. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to say uh, the same thing last night, um, but yeah, I, I don't give any credibility to be a star anymore. Between Perez Hilton and Machine Gun Kelly, 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that shit's that shit's done. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Okay, I'm these, sorry. These I machine have to agree guns. You, Charlie, on that one. Okay. I can't take uh like the B S star or the whole stop drinking or you'll get whatever the stupid thing is when <laughs> that's very are getting pulled over constantly. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, uh, in, it's a good message. It's a good message. It's good for them to have it on that Saturday it's morning a good slam. Message, but but a lot of, it's very contradictory when you look at who they're sponsored. Yes, it, it is. But I mean, any of these can be, you know, um, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, it's getting a little convoluted with their, whether they're throwing guys like that on. They don't, hopefully they don't throw Fred Durst in there. For, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can see a bully. <laughs> do this. You know, um, speaking of bullies, uh, Seamus, still a heel. There you go. You're going at still it. Still a heel. Hey, hey. Finally, David Atunga taking action Punk, against it. Still a heel. Mm, yep. But a really Not good in Chicago. Not in so, Chicago. So, nope. Nope. I will. I will give you this. I Because I, I am one that's permanently on the fact that CM Punk is a face. But I will give you this. WWE is doing everything in their power to make us think that CM Punk is a heel. Hey, mm. hey, wrestle fan. CM Punk, still, still a heel. Nope. You'll fuck yourself, wrestle bitch. Hey, Chachi, I don't conform be a star. to your standards, Chachi, okay? Be a star. No, I'm done being a star. <laughs> Just w- for that one week? WWE doesn't believe in it anymore, neither do I. <laughs> so go fuck yourself, wrestle fan. Still a heel. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, on that note, I think it's time to settle it down, <laughs> take it out of here, and let us know, other than being the star is bullshit, what did you learn from wrestling this week, Chachi? That uh, Kane can summon the fires of hell through a garbage can, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that Harold is a bitch. <laughs> okay. Wrestle fan, how about you? Wow. Um, Wrestle I fan's a wrestling. bitch also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> um, uh, I learned from wrestling this week that uh, it's interesting dynamic. Uh, you can get pulled over for drunk driving and bribe a cop and get suspended for 15 days, but making a Kobe Bryant joke that is 10 years dated will get you fired. Is it, you're talking about the uh, Funkadactyl, right? Uh, the Drunkadactyl, as the we now call it. Drunkadactyl, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. How about you, uh, LB? Uh, I learned that two Mexicans are always greater than one. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> he should put him against Ryback. Does anybody else? Do need, does anybody do else? Explain? Whatever your opinions are of Sin Cara and Mysterio, does anybody else want them to stay a tag team? Like, yes. is, isn't that something yes. that's actually one? I think they work really well together. I think they're a great team. It's something different. It's just because they're both Mexican that you think that. Still, and they wear masks. masks. Well, they not, cover. They know? cover each other's weaknesses. They cover each other's weaknesses really well. Yeah, yeah, they do. And it'd be something different to throw in, you know, against the other guys that are just kind of thrown together and and whatever other. I, I just really think they would liven up the tag division like significantly if they went with that. Um, other than them against you know Cody Rhodes and his mystery partner of the week. Um, yeah. Well, the only reason Damian Sandow wasn't his partner this week because that one chick got suspended, so you couldn't have Brodus Clay or Sandow on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, what about you, Wheels? What did I learn? I learned that Paul Heyman can't drive. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, running into people is just this thing. Okay. Okay. That's all I got to say about that. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what uh, from the from the chat room here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Riz, Riz says Mysterio and Sin Cara are going to Circle Jerk. Uh, Bobby <laughs> up Daytown learned that Perez Hilton is is a wear Ryback. Also, the snake puppet is still a snake puppet in German, in Italian, in French, in English, and in Canadian. Uh, Riz says he learned <laughs> that we can sit in front of a television f- uh, for ten minutes. In the second hour's main event, waiting anxiously for a hug. Ciro uh, learned that Miz and Layla are feuding. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Yeah, um, that was. Bo Diggity learned that Sorg won't play Henry Quest. What? 
What will I play? We, 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 we're running out of time, but we cannot play that. But you should just YouTube search 10 requests, Henry please. Quest. Anyone that's out there. Um, also, side note on the one with the languages. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever, whoever wrote that one. I didn't know Canadian was a language. Sure it is. <laughs> eh? I'm pretty sure um, they, I was just an ethnicity and some speak English and some speak French. And those but, curious, but, go check out Let's Play uh, number 14 from earlier tonight, uh, where we do have a Canadian on the show. Hey, lady, there we go. Lady Canadian. Uh, let's see. And also Melina versus Alicia Fox is the best Divas match on the women's cell block. Uh, sorry, the shot <laughs> from the Elixir. Um, and do, 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 I think that's it. Because there's just a lot of capitals going on. Play the fucking link. I can't play it on this computer. Sorry. No, um, go to YouTube search Henry Quest, though. Geez, you people geez. at home, do it. Uh, other than that, yeah, I learned, I learned, uh, I learned, uh, that, that mar mar tasting like marinara may be a, uh, uh, a hiring <laughs> requirement for prime wrestling, <laughs> yes. as Chachi found out uh, <laughs> er earlier uh, this week. So, Not only do you need yeah. a drug test, but you need a taste test. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's they, they, they do it hard up there in Prime Wrestling in Cleveland, Ohio. All right, guys. It's been the Wrestling Mayhem Show. As usual, please check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check us out on iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Box, and Stitcher, and anywhere else you can find the fine, fine podcasts or video cast or whatever you net cast, whatever you want to call them these days. We're in video and audio form. Uh, so we got the other one than what you just found us in, of course, available. Uh, you can also uh, drop us a line to that email address at Good Times, Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And also drops a line at 412 206 WMS0. Um, you can also uh, uh, tweet us at Mayhem Show uh, on Tout and uh, on Facebook, on uh, 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 Google. We have a great Facebook open group where a lot of conversation happens. We get a lot of stories that we talked about tonight. We're drawn from that, actually. Um, and uh, also, hey, Buy the app, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, on your iOS app store, on your Amazon app store uh, for Android, iPads, uh, iPhones, all that stuff. $1.99 supports the show, gives you some extra content, and easy ways to contact the show, all the stuff I just talked about. Uh, yeah. Uh, with that, guys, thanks a lot. This has been your Wrestling Mayhem Show for Wheels, for Shashi, for WrestleFan, for LB, for our great chat room here, live.sorgatronmedia.com, starting around about 8.30 p.m. Eastern, or you can join all the rest of the shows uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you want to talk tech or video games with us, uh, you can join us there. Uh, so uh, this has been the Mayhem Show. See you next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.